So we've got some vocabulary to do before we can start doing our work in the section 4-6. So let's write a vocabulary section on our page. I'm going to write an example of an arithmetic sequence at the top of the page. And then we'll talk about what is a sequence, how is arithmetic sequence different from others. That one is an arithmetic sequence. A sequence, this is kind of going back to our all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares, right? All series of numbers that may have a pattern are sequences, but only special ones are, arith are arithmetic sequences. So a sequence is a list of numbers that may, that's the key word for this, may form a pattern. And as we start doing some of these examples, you guys are going to probably re realize you were doing things like this in elementary school. They were just asking you to find the pattern. And now we're going to be looking at a specific kind of pattern. Another vocabulary word is the word term. Quite simply, a term in a sequence is every number that's in it, or each number. We have a special variable that we will be using in formulas for this, and the variable is a, a lowercase a. Yeah, so in my example up here, 12 is a term, 4 is a term. We could continue this and anything we found later would be a term. Now we get to the real issue of the day. What makes these ones special? So let's define arithmetic sequence. When the terms of a sequence differ by the same non-zero number. I read definitions like this, and I'll be honest, I know what this is, and I go back to being in like fourth grade and going, uh, if I understood what that definition meant, but it, it really isn't as hard as that. I mean, it's kind of a confusing definition, but I'll break it down. When the terms of a sequence differ, so a sequence is going to be a list of numbers that may have a pattern. In an arithmetic sequence, the pattern is that the numbers in it differ by the same non-zero number. If I take the first term 12 and I find the difference between it and the second term, what is the difference there? It's going down by 4. Then I want to see, does the next term and the next also go down by 4? Yeah. So 12 minus 4 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. Do you see what I mean? That is the difference is the same. So a common difference is what we're calling what we just found. And really, the vocabulary there defines itself. It's the difference that every set of terms in the sequence have in common. We use a variable for it, and the variable is D. Our example up here, our D is equal to negative 4. The common difference between all of the terms in this is that they go down by 4, so it's a negative 4. Thumbs up if this is making sense so far. Good. All right, here's where even if you're not getting all the definitions at this moment, if you're going to go back and write them down with notes in a few minutes, I want you to write these things down because they'll be important for our using the formula. We have things like this. This is pronounced A sub 8. Instead of being like 
an exponent where it's floating above, it's now a sub, it's down below. What this means, that it's the eighth number in the sequence. And I'm just going to put arithmetic sequence there for short. We also use a sub n, and that is any number in the sequence. Basically, that n we can replace with a number. So if I replace this with 27, it would be the 27th number in the set. Does this make sense? So if I put the letter a with a little sub 1, it's going to be the first number in the sequence. Go back and look at my example up top. What is my first number? So in that example, I'm going to draw another arrow down here. My a sub 1 is equal to 12 because a sub 1 is the first number. Because we're pointing out that it's going down. It's, it's subscript. If you're ever in like Word, you, or I, Google Docs does this too, you can do superscript and that's what an exponent looks like and subscript goes below. So it's a shortcut to saying that. Okay, so <clears throat> I want all note takers now because we're going to do a couple of examples with this. So about halfway down your page, I took a little bit more than halfway if you're needing to leave some room. I want you to title this section, How to Find the Nth Term. By saying nth term, I'm saying, could you find the 17th term for me? Or what's the next three numbers? The fifth term, whatever, right? Now, I'll be honest, I, I've been teaching math for a long time. I know you guys are the kind of kids who when you don't know what to do on a test and they say, can you tell me the next seven numbers? You'll find the pattern and you'll just go through and find the next seven numbers. Who's done that before? There's a faster way. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. There is a formula. That works when it's seven numbers or even 17 and you're patient on a test and you take the time. But what if I asked you to find like the 42nd number? Who has time for that, right? It takes time, it takes space on your paper, it can be frustrating and you're like, everybody else is moving on and I'm not. No, they're not, they're skipping questions, but anyway. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> the formula is A sub N is equal to we're saying there that I can put in a number I want to look for in the, in the sequence, and if I plug in the rest of this formula, I will find it. A sub 1 stands for what part of the formula, or the, the sequence? The first number. The first number plus parentheses, the number in the sequence I'm looking for, minus 1, times the common difference. Okay, so we're going to use a new set of numbers, not the ones I used at the top of the page. I want you guys to write down this set of numbers, and it is an arithmetic sequence. 5, 2, negative 1, negative 4, dot, dot, dot. That ellipsis tells us that this series is going on. It's not just that set, it keeps going. What if it doesn't? We'll be going through some examples like that in a minute. Okay, what if I want you guys to find the 22nd term? Well, I have four. I could sit here and just keep going until I had 22, but I don't have time for that. We want to get this done faster. We're going to use this formula. We need to know a few things. We need to know what the A1 is. What is it? <coughs> Five. We need to know what the common difference is. What's happening with these numbers? 
They're going down by three, and so we would call the common difference negative three. And then we need to know what the 22nd term is, because or what term we're looking for. We're looking for 22. Every time I have an n in here, we're going to put the 22 in. Okay. So let's let's do this. A sub 22. So to find the 22nd term, I'm going to put in the first term, which is 5, plus 22 minus 1, times the common difference. Who sees where I got those numbers from? Who's still a little iffy? Kind of makes sense. Okay, let's, let's go through and simplify now. We'll set up another one in a minute. <coughs> when I do these, I don't write this A sub 22 every time. I'll just put it when I get the answer. Right now I want to simplify and I have to use order of operations. What's here that's going to go first? <laughs> Parentheses. 5 plus 21 times negative 3. Next up is multiplying 5 plus negative 63 when I simplify that what do I get negative 58 oh. so the 22nd term is negative 58 Sorry, I don't see right and I want to go back to my sequence. I started in the positives, and even four numbers in, I was into the negatives, and you know it's just going to keep going down and down and down. It makes sense that we got a negative number that's pretty big, right? Let, what if I asked you guys to do this with the 15th term? Does our a sub 1 change? Does our common difference change? If I'm using the same sequence, I can use those same things. The only thing that's going to change is the n. Because now instead of the 22nd term, I'm trying to find the 15th. So a sub 15 is equal to 5 plus, what am I going to put in my parentheses? 15 minus 1. 15 minus 1 times negative 3. Five plus fourteen times negative three. I did the math earlier today, so I will just tell you that's negative forty-two. Five minus forty-two, or five plus a negative forty-two, same thing, gets me a sub fifteen, or the fifteenth number in the sequence would be negative thirty-seven.